Good day. The television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Western Armenia continues to protect the Armenians of Artsakh. The government of Western Armenia, the Artsakh Salvation Movement and the Patriotic Union of Shushi invite to a Zoom meeting. Subject of the day with Grigor Amizayan. Israel participated in the Artsakh War, Shahan Kandahirian. The petition of the defender regarding the replacement of Colonel Norai Aslanyan's arrest with another disruption was granted. The lawsuit filed against the Tigranagir Chamber of Advocates for the recognition of genocide committed against the Armenians contradicts international agreements. The member of the Turkish parliament congratulated the Armenians of Turkey and other Christians of the occasion of Christmas on the issues of the Armenians of Western Armenia. On September 28 of this year, the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Armina Gabrahamian, signed a decree regarding the rights of Armenians of Artsakh. According to the first article of that order, Western Armenia continues to protect the rights of Artsakh Armenians in their territory and their institutions, in accordance with international law. In the second article of the order of President Armina Gabrahamian of September 28, it was once again reaffirmed the partial of complete occupation by military force of the Baku, authorities of Artsakh, which is an inseparable part of the state of Armenia recognized in 1920, including the demarcation and the elimination of the borders with Azerbaijan should have been carried out through negotiations in accordance with Article 92 of the Civil Treaty, taking into account the crimes against humanity committed against all Armenians since the existence of their state. The third article of Decree No. 98 states that since the war situation of September 27, 2020, the sufferings of the indigenous Armenian people of Artsakh are subject to the application of genocide against humanity according to the Convention on the Prevention and Suppression of the Crimes Genocide, which was adopted in 1948. The President of Western Armenia, Armena Gabrahamian, has annulled and invalidated the decision signed by Mr. Sanve Shahramanian decree mentioned below, which does not comply with the National Constitution of the Republic of Western Armenia under the fourth clause of Article No. 92. After this decree was ratified, it was included and published in the official newspaper of the Republic of Western Armenia. It should be reminded that the President of Western Armenia, Armenia Gabrahamian, signed the decree on the rights of Artsakh Armenians on September 28, 2023. The government of Western Armenia, the Artsakh movement and the Shushi Patriotic Union invite, invite you to participate in the 2023 Zoom meeting to be held on December 23 in Armenian language. The Zoom meeting will take place at 10 o'clock at Paris time at 14 o'clock at Yerevan time and the theme of the meeting is Artsakh has a future. Join the Zoom meeting at the following link. The deputy of the third convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia, Grigor Amirzayan, quoted in his microblog the words of the Minister of Defense of the Rish Russian Federation, Shoigu, that the Russian peacekeeping troops remain the basis and guarantor of peace in Syria and Artsakh. Next year, the Russian military contingent will have the task of maintaining peace and stability in Syria and Karabakh in the sphere of developing situation, added Sergei Shoigu, while there are no more Armenians in Artsakh. Moreover, the Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation confirmed that the Russian army is one of the most active and literate in the world. You can read more about the topic by the video published by Grigor Amirzayan. Shahan Kandahirian, editor in chief of the Beirut Azdak newspaper, in a conversation with one of Eastern Armenia's electronic journalists, noted that Israel is not only developing a strategic partnership with Baku, but was also a participant in the Artsakh war. If we draw regional parallels, Israel is not only developing a strategic partnership with Baku, but was also a participant in the Artsakh war. There was also Israel-made military equipment there. It is also necessary to notice the contradiction, at least in terms of declaration. Turkey not only condemns the Israel attack, but also accuses Israel to committing genocide against the people in Palestine. And here is the contradiction on, because it's such strategic issues that Turkey's Azerbaijan tandem cannot have different positions regarding such four situations. Here, the distribution of roles is declarative because at this moment, the Turkey-Israel strategic partnership continues. It has not been. When we look at uh, these issues through Armenian side, apart from the issue of the rights of the Palestinian people, we also see the Israel factor, which is closely cooperating with Azerbaijan and becoming direct participant in the Artsakh war. 
So the question is on the issue of Artsakh closed for the civilized world. Shahan Kandaharian answered that at least according to Canada's official statement, no, because this statement is made by Canada's foreign minister. The court satisfied the request of the defender to the replaced detention of Artsakh Defense Army, Colonel Noray Aslanya, with another suspicion. Noray Aslanya's defense team released a statement, which now we represent. After about half a year of illegal detention a few days ago, on December 15, in 2023, the Criminal Court of General Jurisdiction of the City of Yerevan, this time presided over by Judge John Dehaya satisfied the Colonel of Reserve Army of the Artsakh Defense Army, accused in the case of alleged illegal turnover of firearms and monitors. Defense Attorney Armin Andiyagan, a motion to replace the detention of Nuray Aslanyan, who was awarded by the first and second degree of the Marta Ganghach Medal by means of another disruption. Despite the fact that in the opinion of the advocacy group the evidence presented refuted both the uh, alleged crime committed by the colonel and the existence of grounds for a retraining order, the decision of the court to replace the arrest with house arrest and the ban on absence should be evaluated positively. The defensive side reports that they will be consistent in restoring justice in the case of Colonel Aslanian, including informing the public about the developments in the investigation of the groundless accusation during the trial. Aslanian is a military commander with a high military education who served in Army and Army from 1991 to 2022. He was awarded by the Garmir Haj Medal of the second and the first degree, as well as many medals of the military service of the Republic of Armenia and for his significant successes in military affairs. From 2021, he held the deposition of deputy head of the security department in the staff of the president of the Republic of Artsakh. According to the report jointly prepared by the Media and Legal Works Union, operating in Turkey and the Lawyers for Lawyer non-governmental organization based in the Netherlands, the legal process initiated against the president of the Tigran Agir Chamber of Advocates and 10 other lawyers for the recognition of the genocide against the Armenians contradicts international legal agreements and decisions. Akunk News uh, Agency writes about this according to the source investigations were launched against the president and members of the Tigran Agir Chamber of Advocates who made statements on the anniversary of the genocide against the Armenians and with the permission of the Turkish Ministry of Justice they turned into court proceedings. Seven separate court cases were initiated against the Tigran Agir Chamber of Advocates in 2017 up to 2023 for announcements made every April 24. The Turkish Ministry of Justice used the infamous Article 301 of the Turkish Criminal Code as a basis for allowing the start of the judicial process. The fourth session of the court process should take place this Friday, December 22, at the ninth court of serious crimes in Tigran Agir. The non-governmental organization Lawyers for Lawyers operating in the Netherlands together with the Media and Legal Works Union operating in Turkey has developed a professional point of view which will be presented at the December 22 meeting. According to that point of view, provision of the law which uh, served as the basis for the judicial processes contradicts Turkey's international obligation in the field of human rights. It is noted in the opinion that this court case especially contradicts the UN International Convention on Personal and Political Rights as well as the freedom of speech enshrined in the European Convention on Human Rights and the UN decision on the independence of lawyers and judges. Finally, the authors of the opinion, the Lawyers for Lawyers, NGO and the Media and Legal Works Union called on the Ninth Court of Serious Crimes of Tigran Agir to reject these court cases. George Aslanian, a member of parliament of Assyrian de descent in Turkey and a follower of the Syrian Christian Church, congratulated all the Christians of the country, Greeks, Armenians and Assyrians on Christmas. He reported in his uh, blog, congratulated all Christians, especially our Greek, Armenian and Assyrian citizens living in Turkey. I hope that the new year will bring peace and love to our country and the whole world. I congratulate all members of Parliament on the New Year, the Member of Parliament wrote in his native Aramaic. In an interview with the Mediascope TV channel, Aslan stated that the members of the Nationalist and Conservative Good Party of the Turkey strongly reacted to his speech. We did not come here from another planet. We have been inhabitants of this land for 12,000 years. Why don't you accept this? 
We have been inhabitants of this land for 12,000 years. Why don't you accept this? He replied to the accusation of other deputies, condemning him for speaking in a language other than Turkish. In 1918, at the beginning of March, in order to strengthen the defense of Artsakh and Zangezur by the decision of the Armenian National Council of Tiflis, a re regiment of Artsakh and Zangezur residents was created, which was to go to Artsakh under the command of Colonel Malik Shana Zayan. Since the Ganzak Yevlak railway road was closed, it was decided to send the regiment along the North Bayazet. The regiment reaches Yelenovka from the where it is about 40 kilometers to North Bayazet. The first group became the victim of the Tatar attack. Around 70 soldiers are killed, many are injured. The Tatars destroyed the telegraph poles and the connection between North Bayazet. And Yerevan is completely cut off. Meanwhile, the people in New Bayazet were completely unaware of the attack near Yelenovka. The information reaches Yerevan and the National Council sends new forces first to negotiate in the case of failure to open the way by force. At the decided time, the delegation goes to the lake. The Turks fell at the feet to parliament with tears in their eyes, blaming the crime and uh, asked for forgiveness. Soon, the Yerevan partisan regiment with two cannons arrives in Yelenovka and moves towards North Bayazet. The Turks opens fire from the very first nature fortifications of Turkish village of the regiment is forced to go to military operations. After a short resistance, uh, the Turks run away. The road to North Bayazet is being completely restored. This was all for today. Goodbye. Shit, check out,